Hey everybody, my name is Jack Canada. I'm going to be your t narrator type host deal for this uh, video. I've been a grad student pursuing my master's for a year and a half now with the department. Today we thought we'd show you kind of around the building, each of the labs, and let you meet a series of students doing other interesting projects. So um, first we're going to take a look at some of the laser based metal added manufacturing we've got in the building. Hi. Hi everybody, my name is Jack Berkson. I'm currently an undergraduate senior in the welding engineering program here at Ohio State. Um, what I have next to me here is the concept laser MLAB Qzing um, that the department received in about spring of 2018. And it's a really cool opportunity that we have here with this machine. Um, what it is is a laser powder bed fusion additive manufacturing machine. And it's something that we use for both manufacturing in our lab, so working with other research groups here at Ohio State and internationally to produce parts uh, through this process for their validation for their research, as well as conducting our own research. Um, so a little bit on that, I've had an opportunity to work with a bunch of different groups here at Ohio State um, doing research on our own with this machine. And I'd say really what we have an opportunity to focus with is taking the welding engineering coursework and the expertise we have here at Ohio State and doing a lot of um, research on the interaction between the process and materials. So we have a lot of opportunity to, one, create parameters for new materials, explore the use of new materials, and also take advantage of looking at all the different process parameters that this kind of machine uses to really expand the technology and advance it using that expertise we have here at Ohio State. Over here we have some more of our characterization techniques. My name is Chu Tong. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Ohio State University. I'm working with Dr. Uh, Rutherford. Uh, so and we're going to talk about this hardness instantiation measurement. Uh, so this hardness instantiation measurement, the special thing about it is actually it be able to make several indents and combine to make a mapping. And uh, this is uh, like an example right over here. Uh, so some will actually make the indents and actually using that indent to combine using a map. And that's a very good method to evaluate materials and different hardness of the uh, uh, materials. So, so and so forth. Uh, this equipment, the mechanism for this equipment is measure uh, based on the optical measurement of the, the size of the indents and using the size of the indents and tell you how much hardness you have. Um, so it's a pretty good equipment we use a lot. Moving on, we're going to head over to the polymers lab and talk to Flint. Uh, my name is Flint Colvin. I'm a second year master's student. Um, I work in the plastics and composites uh, welding lab laboratory with uh, my advisor, Avi Benatar. Um, so in the plastics and composites joining laboratory, we've got a bunch of different uh, plastic welding processes and machines. So over here, this is a microwave or RF welding uh, machine. And then we also have a vibration welder right here, and then an ultrasonic welder right here. Uh, so this is the ultrasonic welder. You can see here, this is the horn. This is what actually welds the plastics and composites. Um, so this works by vibrating this horn up and down like 20,000 times in a, in a second, extremely small amounts. And that causes uh, something called uh, viscoelastic heating in the plastic and also intermolecular uh, friction that can just uh, cause plastics to melt and then fuse together. Now we're moving on to the MET lab. This is where students do all of their metal graphic preparation and imaging. I'm Colleen Pilla. So I'm co-advised by Dr. Wei Zhang here in welding engineering and Dr. Mike Mills in material science. So one of the things we're really interested in is looking at grain structure, which we do uh, using EBSD over at CMOS, which is our microscopy facility. Um, so I do all of my sample prep here. Um, we use the polishing wheels uh, to get a pretty good finish. And then I use the Vibramet very frequently, um, which kind of provides a, a last finishing uh, surface that we can do EBSD on the structure. Hi, my name is Sam Luther. I'm a fourth year PhD student here at the Welding Lab. And today I'm using the horizontal gas tungsten arc welder to do a spot weld on some alloy 690 nickel based material and this research is for the study of ductility dip cracking and the effect of high sulfur in the material. So we've got a sample with 0.01% sulfur in a material which should normally have less than 0.001% and uh, hopefully we'll see um, some new 
metallurgical phenomena that will teach us about the ductility dip cracking failure mechanism. Now let's go ahead over to the thermal lab. So I'm Dean Sage. I'm a fourth year PhD student here at the Ohio State uh, Welding Engineering Department. And this is our Gleeble. So this is a welding simulator. So we can take samples that look something like this or a variety of other similar shapes. And we can put them in there. They can heat up to as far as 10,000 degrees Celsius per second. And then we can fracture them with up to uh, four tons of force. So with that way, we can repeat some of the welding processes we try to look at uh, regularly and help you figure out some new stuff. Continuing on, we're going to head over to the laser lab now. My name is Sean Sutton, and I'm a PG PhD student with Dr. Boyd Panton. Uh, this is the laser lab, room 170. And behind me, you have our laser attached to a six kilowatt power supply. And you have our Iskawa robot which is a uh, five axis, maybe six axis robot. I might be missing an axis there. Um, and with it, we're able to do uh, laser welding. We're getting set up to do hybrid laser arc welding in the future. And we can do real time monitoring with some sensors that are attached to it. Here we are heading over to the high bay now. This is where a lot of our welding equipment is actually stored and experiments are conducted. I'm Andres Acuna. I'm working with Dr. Ramirez. Uh, we have our project working on welding and cladding using hyperduplex stainless steels. And we're using the Jetline uh, equipment from Miller. It's a GTA automated system, and it basically allows us to have a more controlled, uh, regular deposition of wires. So if for welding or for cladding, when you need to have something more steady and ind independent of the filler metal, we use the GTA system, and we can actually control to put regular deposits in different layers. Hi, I'm Leah Emanuel. Uh, Brian, Laura. This is our resistance spot welder. Um, it's what we're using for our research. Uh, yes, this is a MFDC medium frequency resistance spot welder by Obara. Right now we're welding some steel to steel samples, but also we're doing the similar welding, which yes. Ryan's working on, yep. um, our materials is for 2000. Yes. Uh, what aluminum are you working with? Uh, 6000 series aluminum, silicon, magnesium, uh, aluminum alloy. So my name is Jack Candidate. I'm working with Dr. Dennis Harwig. My project is looking at using the OTC Welby uh, robot and OTC Diehen NV8 to produce metal added manufacturing builds using wire arc added manufacturing. Uh, these are some of the walls that I built using that process and I'm going to later be building larger and larger builds. Uh, I'll show some on the screen right there. <laughs> okay, cool. So there you go. That was a handful of some of the things our graduate students were doing and some of the equipment they were using for it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.